Do you know, I've never been a big fan of gas stoves or little butane stoves. But having said that, this little stove from Camping Moon may have just changed my mind. If you're interested in finding out why, keep watching. So before we begin, I just want to thank the people at Campers List for sending this stove so that I could share it with you. So this is the Camping Moon XD 2F. And I didn't request this stove. Cam Campers List offered to send it to me. There's another item that they sent me as well that I'll be reviewing at a later date, but that's another video. So when they offered to send this to me, I hesitated because honestly, I've never been a big fan of isobutane or propane stoves for out in the woods. There's probably a couple of reasons for that. First off, if I have the opportunity, I want to use a wood stove because I really enjoy using them. Well, today I can't because we're under a fire ban, no surprise there. And when we are under a fire ban, Usually I revert to using an alcohol stove and I quite like them. And the thing I like about alcohol stoves is they're quiet. They do take a lot longer to bring water to a boil, but they're so quiet. And that's one of the reasons. The other reason is I don't like the idea of having to carry it around a canister until it's empty, dragging it home, and then either disposing of it. I have yet to, to uh, figure out, not figure out, I know how, but I have yet to start actually trying to refill them, something I'll probably do at some point. So they just really haven't been all that popular with me. And I do have a few of them five, I think, different styles of gas stoves that I wanted to try over the years. And it wasn't until this one that I really started to see the benefits of a gas stove. So what I'll do now is I'll take you down to my bench top. I'm going to go over the key features for this stove. I'll go over its physical and performance specifications, and then we'll do some demonstrations. All right, before we go over the key features as well as the specifications for the Camping Moon XD2F, I thought I'd share with you what else came with it. So this is the case that the stove arrived in, and this is a bit unusual right off the start. Most of the stoves I have come in a, a hard-sided plastic case, a two-piece plastic case that, uh, you know, does a good job of keeping it all in one piece. They, they just don't speak high quality to me. Uh, this is different, though. This is a canvas material that has speaks very high quality to me with a very heavy duty zipper. It looks bigger than it needs to be, but it is also padded inside. So let me open it up and show you what you get. So right off of the top, of course, you get the instructions and warranty information as usual, and all the warnings and everything else you need to go with the stove. Actually quite helpful, quite useful. All right, we go. Now, here is the stove itself. And it is held inside the case by this little bit of a stretch elastic band. I don't think it needs to be held like that, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. It's just that's the way it came. So you can see right off of the top that the pot supports are not attached to it. So the pot supports are separate and you can attach them and they sit in a little pouch all by themselves. And that little pouch is removable. It's actually Velcroed into the case. Again, not sure that it's necessary, but this is the way it came. So let's take the pot supports out. We'll talk more about those in a moment. So I'm going to assemble the stove and then I will give you the performance specifications for it. Uh, I guess the first thing to do is I'll put it right on the canister so that I can show you that as well. So the fuel that I've used for my testing at home and use out here in the woods is what's easily available to me through one of our hardware stores known as Canadian Tire. This is their house brand, which is Woods. So this is an isobutane propane mix. So uh, yeah, so you can probably buy better fuels, but again, this is what was available to me. And I do have a little uh, extended uh, can canister support on the bottom of it as well. So let me just put this on. A little squeak of gas comes out. Fold the uh, lever out and open like that. Now, here's what one of the things that's different right off of the top is the pot support. You fold the arms out and they're spring-loaded, almost like a, a clothespin or something like that. And then you can wrap that around the top of the stove and the spring holds it closed. And there you go, it's all assembled. Now I'm gonna make give you a few comments on that design because I think it's relative to the conversation in a moment, but let me go over the physical specifications for this and as well as, as key features. So physically, the stove itself from the top to the bottom 
comes in at 84 millimeters across the open pot stands it's 142 millimeters the burner itself in diameter is 46 millimeters the weight of the stove by itself comes in at 98 grams and the weight of the stove in the case with the instructions comes in at 149 grams now i will put the imperial measurements and weights in the video description below if that's what you're more interested in knowing now let's just go back to the key features for a moment so what sets this stove out from any of the others that i've owned or even had been aware of because to be quite honest up until now i thought a gas stove was a gas stove they may look different but and they may have different uh, ratings or outputs and BTUs, but I didn't think there was going to be that much difference in design. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. There is a classification of stoves that are coming out now that have a built-in pressure regulator, and this is one of them. So this actually has a built-in pressure regulator, gas regulator, right in the body of the stove and what makes that so important to the performance of the stone is our stove is that it maintains an even pressure when the temperatures are low or high it will help to maintain the pressure what that does is it gives you a consistent burn regardless of temperature now i haven't tried this in sub-zero temperatures but on I mean, all reports and all the reviews i've seen this will work down to a relatively low temperature below the freezing point so that's important because most gas stoves don't work well when they start to get very cold the other thing it does the regulator is as the gas canister empties sometimes you get inconsistent performance because the pressure changes especially with the temperature and you get flare-ups and die downs and flare-ups and die downs well the regulator will act to even that out so it will maintain a steady pressure regardless of the environmental conditions so I think that's quite a an interesting thing now also in my experience and I'll talk more to it in a moment is that the regulator should and I believe does actually act to create a more efficient stove in terms of fuel economy and I got some amazing economy out of this so far so far and it does add to the performance in terms of the output of the stove so I've got some really fast boil times again amazingly fast so I also already pointed out the removal pot stands it does have a piezoelectric uh, igniter on the side here and this is kind of different and, and also speaks to the new generation of gas stoves. Is and I, When I first looked at this and I laid a pot on top, I really thought that the pot was too low to the burner, that there was not enough clearance to the actual jet holes of the burner in order for it to work. And the more I learned, the more I came to understand the way it is designed like that and the benefits of it. So let me just see if I can give you a little bit of a close up here. As you can see, the jets are actually concave and they're sunk into the top of the burner below a protruding lip. So the depth from the jets themselves to the top of the pot support is about the same as it is on many other gas stoves. But what you have here is they're protected by this little sidewall and the lowered height so that they should be less affected by breezes from the sides. Well, I, I haven't subjected this to heavy winds, but I can tell you in using it outdoors that I have not needed a windscreen. I, quite often I do carry them anyway, especially for use with alcohol stoves, but uh, this should prevent or at least lessen and dampen the effects of a wind coming from the side, robbing heat away from your pot. So I think that is a kind of a unique and important feature to share about this. So in addition to the physical specifications, the stove is rated at a 3.3 kilowatt output, which is 11,260 BTUs and it has a gas consumption of 180 grams per hour which means I should get about three hours out of this canister if I'm lucky. Now I would think that's at its lowest rate. So let me give you a couple of my observations and tests with this and then we'll get it set up and I'll use it to cook my lunch. So one of the first things I wanted to do with this is check it out to see about boiling water. Obviously that's the test that seems to be the benchmark for stoves regardless of their alcohol or gas stoves is how quick will it boil water. Well I put two uh, 
pot, two cups of water on with the pot. Actually, I'll show you the pot that I used because I did bring that with me today. And I turned it up and I can't say I cranked it all the way open, but I turned it up quite high and I got a boil time of a minute and 35 seconds. And I had to stop and say, okay, what happened here? It cannot be that fast. I've never had any stove, regardless, boil water that fast. So I repeated the test, but this time was even a little bit more precise in that I measured, measured the canister before I boiled the water and I measured the canister, I mean for weight, I measured the canister before and after and to see what the fuel consumption was. And again, a minute and 35 seconds to bring two cups of water to boil. Now that was at home, it wasn't out here in the woods, but I have no reason to think as long as it's not too cold and too windy that I wouldn't get very much identical performance. It only used five grams of fuel. The other thing I noticed is how quiet it was. And I, I, I really thought that the stove wasn't operating when I first turned it on because I'm used to the roar of a lot of the other little stoves, not this stove. It is very, very quiet. In fact, I just made myself a cup of tea and I had to watch it a few times to make sure it was still operating because it was so quiet. So that's really a, a big, huge thing to me. And the other thing that this stove does, and this is probably the key feature that I think I like more than anything else about this stove, is the variability. I can get that high, high, intense heat and flame, bringing water to a boil really, really fast, or I can take this down to such a low simmer that the bubbles are barely rising off the bottom of the pot. That variability means that I can cook with the confidence of not likely burning. I say not likely because there's always my human error, but the stove should be a lot easier, is a lot easier to use when cooking with and less likely to cause me to ruin my lunch. So uh, now there's one thing I guess it's often referred to as the elephant in the room that people who know stoves are probably already identified. This looks an awful lot like a direct copy of the Japanese-made Soto Windmaster. And I think it is very, very close. So many of the characteristics of this stove are identical to that of the Soto Windmaster. It is, I'm, you know, I, I don't own a Soto Windmaster, so I cannot tell you. Uh, you know, I can't compare the two of them side by side, but looking at the specifications for the Soto, Everything is almost identical, including the, the aspect of being able to remove the pot support. The Soto has that as one of its uh, key features as well. So I find that really quite interesting. Now, there is another stove that came after the Soto, which is being very well toted as well as having, again, a gas regulator like the Soto, like the Camping Moon, and that is the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe. So the upgraded Pocket Rocket from MSR also has a gas regulator, performs very much like the Soto, its piezoelectric lighter is more like the one on this stove than the one on the Soto. And its turn handle for the on, off, and switch here is also very much like the one on the Camping Moon. So it appears that the majority of influence for the stove does come from the Soto Windmaster, but it has elements from the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe. But here's the kicker, at least here in Canada, this stove sells for literally half the price of the other two. The other two stoves average around $100 here in Canada, and you can purchase this stove between $35 and $50, depending on where you find it. And of course, I will be giving you the link to where this stove came from at Camper's List, in case you are interested. Yes, you have to contend with the fact that this is a Chinese-made copy of a Japanese design. Uh, if you're okay with that, then uh, you can get a stove that appears to be of equal quality for half the price. All right, I think I've talked enough about it. I am going to set it up so that I can cook my lunch with it. And I'll give you a few shots of this in operation before we close off with a few final words. There we go. I won't turn that up yet until I get the whole pot on top of it. It's a good chance that I've got leaves and pine needles and everything stuck on the bottom here. And they will smoke if I do. Okay, everything is floating. I can turn that up. 
but as soon as the water comes to a boil, I am going to be turning it down to the lowest, lowest simmer that I can. I can tell you with my experience, it won't take long for this to come to a boil. I think I can turn that down even a little further. I can turn that camping moon stove down so low that I can't even be sure I'm hearing it. I'm trying to see if I can get down low enough that you can see the gap underneath the uh, pan that I'm using on top of the camping moon stove. See how small a gap there is there? Now I've got the heat turned so far down that the flame is not even visible, but uh, you can see that the gap is small and that, of course, is what works to protect the stove from the wind. All right, a few closing words for the Camping Moon XDF2 gas-regulated butane stove. Uh, oh, there was one thing I, I didn't, I don't think I got to show you in the video, and I said that I would, and that is the pot that I use to do those tests, those test times. So uh, this is the pot that I use. It is my Cedar Summit Sigma Series 1.9 liter stainless steel pot. So you can see how wide it is across the base, and it comes with this black coating. So it could be that it was not cheating, but there was an unfair advantage given to the stove by using this pot. I, I guess I could test with some other kettles and, and the like, but as I mentioned, a minute and 35 seconds to bring two cups of water to a boil repeatedly using this pot. So I think that's outstanding performance. So even if you went a little longer because you were using a different pot than this, then uh, you know that still seems to be an exceptionally fast stove and very thrifty, very miserly with the propane. So again, all the things that I like about this, one is the fact, well, right off the top, the fact that it's got a gas regulator built right into the stove to control the pressure and give you nice even pressure regardless of the weather conditions being hot or cold. Again, I don't know how cold you can take this down to, but by all reports, you should be able to take it down to a much lower temperature than you can unregulated stoves, that is. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's mar it's quiet, so quiet. And a few times I had to check when I was doing some simmering just to make sure it was still running, and it was. And so I like that. I like the fact that I can turn it down so low that there's barely bubbles coming off the bottom of the pot. So you can get a very gentle, gentle simmer and without worries that you're going to uh, burn anything that you might have in the pot and have it stick to the bottom. So I guess the only thing you might have to come to terms with is whether or not you're prepared to buy a Chinese-made stove that appears to be in almost every way a copy of the Soto Windmaster. But it does have ele elements, as I mentioned, elements from the uh, MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe. So it's a little bit of both, although I think there's more Windmaster than MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe in, in this. So, uh, you know, I, I guess the best way to say it is I'm now a believer in gas stoves. If this is now my favorite gas stoves, I have a few others. I have one with the remote canister, so it's on a on a uh, hose and that has its specific use. I have a little tiny one which will go in certain cook sets when all I'm looking for is a quick boil. But for any cooking, honestly, for really any cooking, this is the stove I'm going to reach for for all the reasons I've already gone over. I'll continue to use this especially during fire ban season which is unfortunately most of the summer for us here. Yeah, I think I've said enough about it. As I mentioned, this was sent to me, but it wasn't something I requested. It is something they just wanted me to test out. I hesitated, but oh man, am I ever glad I have it now. Now, knowing what I know about this, I would purchase this if it wasn't, hadn't been sent to me. Okay, if you have any questions about the Camping Moon XD2F gas-regulated butane stove, please put them in the comments section below. If you have any comments, put those in. And if you have any ideas for future videos, put those all in the comments section below. And as I mentioned, all the information regarding this stove and its specifications, as well as the link to where you can purchase this, will all appear in the video description. So until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.